Okay, continuing on with part five of uh, <clears throat> passing your check ride into Robinson R44. Uh, next uh, item that we're going to discuss is the maintenance and inspection requirements for the uh, Robinson helicopter, specifically the R44. Robinson helicopters are one of the few helicopters that are basically maintained to a commercial standard <clears throat> in that they have to have not only an annual inspection, but they also have to have 100 hour inspections every 100 hours. Uh, and the basic reason Robinson did that is they want people, uh, you know, maintenance guys to be looking at the aircraft a lot more often than just once per year. All right. Okay, so what are some of the questions that you have to field on <clears throat> maintenance and inspection requirements? Well, the first one most likely is just that. Just that, uh, you know, do you have to have, if you're flying the aircraft as a uh, just private pilot, would you have to uh, have 100 hour inspections on it or is just an annual inspection uh, good enough? And the answer is you have to have the 100 hours as well as the annual inspection. <clears throat> Next question that generally is generated is who can do the inspections? So for a 100 hour inspection, do you, uh, can an A and P do it? Or does it have to be an A and P with IA privileges? And the answer is you can do it, a 100 hour can be done by an A and P. The annual inspection has to be signed off by an IA, by an A and P that has IA uh, privileges. And why they wanna know that, I don't know, but that's a frequent question that comes up uh, on your check ride that you know that for a hundred hour you just have to be an A&P and for an annual inspection you have to have uh, IA privileges. Okay the next set of questions that are generated usually have to do with what preventive maintenance that the pilot can do versus having to be a, a mechanic or an A&P to do them and it's actually quite surprising how much the pilot can actually do. If you look at the R44 uh, POH <clears throat> you go to chapter 8 if you go to chapter 8, page 8-4, which looks like this, handbook here, and the, uh, and the title of, the, of this section is Preventive Maintenance by the Pilot. And if you read through that, you'll see 14 CFR 43 of the Federal Register, uh, Regulations rather allows a certificated pilot to perform preventive maintenance. And preventive maintenance is defined in the above regulations. In other words, in 14 CFR port, Part 43, for those of you that like to, again, cite FAR. But the, uh, as applied to R44, includes the following. And this is actually kind of a surprising um, amount of things that the pilot can do. Number one, replace defective safety wire or cotter pins. You can do that. Number two, replace bulbs, reflectors, and lenses of positions and landing lights. So you can replace the landing lights and the position lights. Replace clean or gap spark plugs. So you can pull the spark plugs out, clean them, put them back in. Uh, clean or replace the engine air filter. Change the engine oil and filter. Inspect and clean the chip detectors. And, um, and this is one that's a little bit surprising to me. Change, change, or replenish the main and tail gearbox oil. So not only can you, if it's low, can you add to it, but you're allowed to actually change it as well as replenish it. Uh, replenish the hydraulic fluid in the reservoir. Remove and replace the gasculator bowl. <clears throat> replace or service the battery. Replace the wear shoes on the landing skid. Those are the skid shoes that wear out if you do a bunch of full downs with them. And then clean or refinish the exterior of the aircraft. And then there's a little footnote here that says, although the above work is allowed by law, it should only be performed by pilots confident that they're qualified to reliably complete the work and all work must be done in accordance with the R44 maintenance manual. Well, guess what? You can pull up the R44 maintenance manual. So if the question came up, well, how would you want to do it in compliance with the R44 maintenance manual? Do you have a copy of that? Well, you can pull it up online, right on robinsonhelly.com. You can pull up the maintenance manual for the R44 and read the sections that apply, all right? Now, if you do this work, let's say we change the oil on the aircraft, you're supposed to make a logbook entry that includes, you know, the date that it was done. This is what all of they have. Which you, you want date that the work was accomplished, a description of the work, change to oil, um, use you know, replace with the aeroshell 1550 or whatever, you know, eight, uh, eight quarts or nine quarts, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> then you also 
put down the the uh, total number of hours on the aircraft you know if the aircraft has 1785.2 hours you put that in your notation there you write down your certificate number and you sign the entry and that makes it legal so it's actually again quite surprising um, how many things that can be done as far as preventive maintenance by the pilot and so that generates the possibility of about a dozen questions you know can you change the oil uh, all right, you can change your oil. Can you, can you change the filter? Yeah, you can change the oil in the filter. Can you add to the hydraulics? Can you add to the tail rotor gearbox? All those sort of things. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to read um, 8 4, page 8 4, and read over the preventive maintenance that can be allowed by the pilot. Because again, there can be numerous questions that can be generated over that topic. Okay, well, here's another question for you. Uh, let's say that you. You uh, bought you a little R22, you're a student pilot, and you've hired an instructor that's doing your flight instruction for you, and I think it was cheap enough, you didn't have to insure it, and so you're thinking, man, I'm gonna save myself some money here and fly this thing really cheap, so now it's due for an oil change. So, as a student pilot, are you allowed to do the oil change? Are you allowed to change the oil of the filter on, on the aircraft? And the answer is no. You have to have at least a private pilot's license to do the preventive maintenance that we've been discussing here. So you can't do it as a student, you have to be at least a private pilot. Okay, so how about a couple of additional questions on record keeping? Uh, one of the questions is they may ask you is, um, are the logbooks for the aircraft, are they required to be kept on board the aircraft? And the answer is no. Now, let me qualify that just a bit. When you go to take your check ride, <clears throat> you should bring the aircraft logs with you because the DPE will want to look at the log books and it only takes about 30 seconds. Take a look at the log books, make sure that you're up to snuff on the annual inspection and that it's uh, current on 100 hour inspection so that the aircraft is airworthy and can be used for the, uh, for the check ride. So even though the uh, log books are not required to be on board the aircraft, you need to take them with you for the check ride so that the uh, DPE can, can look them over and, and uh, you'll be good to go for the check ride. Okay, one of the things that the DPE is very, very likely to ask you is, okay, you understand that a Robinson helicopter has to have a 100 hour inspection every 100 hours, right? And they'll usually give you a scenario like, oh, okay, you just flew the aircraft and you landed and you get out of the aircraft, you've shut down everything, and you realize that you've just now flown 100.5 hours since the last 100 hour inspection, all right? What happens now? Is the aircraft just stuck? You can't move it, or what's, what's the deal? Are you allowed to overfly that 100 hours at all? And the answer is yes, you can go up to an additional 10 hours over the 100 hour, but only uh, for the purpose of taking the aircraft to, uh, to a place where the maintenance can be performed and you have the 100 hour done. So they'll likely give you scenarios, okay, so you've, you've just done that, it's 100.5 hours on there, and so you're gonna fly it from um, <clears throat> you know, point A to point B. Um, are you allowed to, let's say that you wanted to go pick up your buddy uh, Jimbo and take him with you uh, for the flight over to, uh, to get the maintenance performed, is that okay? You think you can do okay with that? No, it's not. So any overage on the on the 100 hour, and again, you can go up to 10 hours uh, over if the uh, overage is for the specific purpose of obtaining the maintenance, the 100 hour inspection, okay? All right, next question is gonna be, all right, you just flew the aircraft and uh, you just landed and you realize that you've, you've actually been 112 hours since the last 100 hour inspection. So you're 12 hours over on the 100 hour inspection. Uh, so now what do you have to do? Are you allowed to uh, then fly the aircraft off to someplace else where you can get the 100 hour done? Or or what would be the situation there? Let's say that there's you don't have the ability where you're sitting at, at airport A, to get the 100 hour performed. What are you supposed to do? Well, guess what? You have to get a ferry permit or a special flight permit because you exceeded the allowable 10 hours over without getting the 100 hour, which which makes it exponentially more difficult to do. It's a lot more trouble if you have to get a special flight permit or ferry permit to uh, <clears throat> move the aircraft where the maintenance can be obtained. And by the way, I don't think there's any steadfast rule that says they have to give you a ferry permit. So 
You know, you don't want to be fly the thing 12 hours over and then them tell you, no, we're not going to give the fare permit. You need to get yourself a trailer and a crane and pick it up, put it on the trailer, drive it somewhere where you can get the maintenance done. <laughs> I've never been in that situation, nor do I wish to ever be in that situation. So you want to avoid, like the plague, flying over that 10-hour um, allowable uh, time limit. Okay, next question is going to be, okay, let's say that that happened. You flew, and we'll make the math easy here. Let's say you flew it over, and then you flew it someplace to get your maintenance, and you ended up with exactly 110 hours on it. Again, just to make the math easy here. You ended up with 110 hours on it since the last 100 hour. Okay, how many hours now from this point forward is it before the 100 hours do again? And the answer is 90 hours, all right? You can't, you can't bump it up by the 10. The 100 hour would be due 100 hours after the original 100 hour uh, was due the first time, all right? So you can't, can't get 110 hours in between 100 hours, right? You're only allowed to go 100 hours in between 100 hours. So if you overfly it by 10, then the next interval is only going to be 90 hours before it's due for a 100 hour inspection again. Okay, so that brings us to the end of part five of passing your uh, check ride <clears throat> in an R44. And uh, we'll take this up again on part six. And again, if you haven't uh, done so yet, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on part six.